Now, conscious sedation means the child is conscious and sedated. That means the patient will respond to the verbal commands and physical stimulus. The child can maintain its own airway. Okay, it is actually an altered state of consciousness. You are not, the child is not fully unconscious. The child is conscious but sedated. So conscious sedation can be done by various routes. That is, you have inhalational route, oral route, IEM, IV, submucosal rectal. Different drugs can be given like opioids, barbiturates, etc. Now we'll move on to nitrous oxide sedation. So in nitrous oxide sedation, uh, certain uh, values are all very important for you. That is what is actually nitrous oxide sedation. In nitrous oxide sedation, a flow rate of five to six liter per minute of nitrous oxide is selected. And what you do is that first you give 100% oxygen for about one to two minutes, followed by titration of nitrous oxide in 10% interval is what is recommended. For example, uh, what you do is that there is a particular nasal hood. This is the picture of a nasal hood that you place during conscious sedation. So you have two knobs. One is for nitrous oxide and one is for oxygen. So when, when, when you start the procedure, what you do is that you give 100% of oxygen for around one to two minutes. After that, what you do, you will reduce the oxygen concentration by 10 and you will increase the nitrous oxide by 10. That means oxygen will be 90, nitrous oxide will be 10. Like that, in 10% intervals, you'll slowly alter the level of nitrous oxide. So nitrous oxide level can be easily titrated. That is for higher procedures like you're uh, going when you're going for an anesthesia injections or extractions, you can give more nitrous oxide. Uh, and for simpler procedures like restriction, scaling and all, you can reduce the amount of nitrous oxide that is administered into the child just by turning the knob in the picture. You can see the knob, you can easily titrate the level of nitrous oxide. So usually at 30% to 50% concentration of nitrous oxide, you get a relaxed and a somnolent patient in 30% to 50% concentration of nitrous oxide. Now, if the nitrous oxide is more than 60% and 70%, uh, ataxia, giddiness, and increased lateness are more likely. Okay, so that is it about uh, nitrous oxide sedation. So what you have to keep in mind is that whenever you start with nitrous oxide sedation, you don't start directly with nitrous oxide. In through this nasal wood, the first gas that you give us 100% oxygen for one to two minutes. So similarly, since uh, now in nitrous oxide sedation, few terminologies that you need to know. The first terminology is the roller coaster effect. That means there is a sharp increase and decrease in the concentration of nitrous oxide administered will make the patient feel nauseous. Okay, that is called a roller coaster effect. So you are suddenly you are increasing the level of nitrous oxide. The patient will have a nauseous feeling for a particular time period. That is called a roller coaster effect, which can easily overcome by turning down the nitrous oxide and increasing the oxygen level. Okay, now. Diffusion hypoxia will occur when the sedation is reversed. That means once you're done with your procedure, what you do is that you will reduce the dose of nitrous oxide and you'll increase the dose of oxygen. So what happens is that with the problem, diffusion hypoxia will occur when the nitrous oxide flow is terminated. So what happens when the nitrous oxide flow, well, that what happens is that the nitrous oxide will easily escape into the alveoli with the rapidity and the oxygen present in the alveoli will be fully diluted. So because of that, for a particular time period, the child will be hypoxic. That is called diffusion hypoxia. So to avoid diffusion hypoxia, what you do is that once the nitrous oxide flow is terminated, you give 100% oxygen for around five minutes. Okay, so what you have to keep in mind is that when you start the sedation and when you end the sedation, you start and end with 100% oxygen. You start with 100% oxygen for one to two minutes, you end it with 100% oxygen again for around five minutes. Otherwise, diffusion hypoxia will occur because of the nitrous oxide which escapes into the alveoli at such a higher rate. All the oxygen present in the alveoli will be diluted and the child might feel hypoxic. That is called diffusion hypoxia. Okay. 
Now, certain properties about nitrous oxide, which has been asked in some of the exams, that is why I'm going into the details. So the specific gravity of nitrous oxide is 1.53. The blood to gas partition coefficient is 0.47, and it will be saturated in blood within three to five minutes. These are some uh, properties of nitrous oxide gas that you need to 